Hello, I am your host Chloe Brewster and welcome to The Creative Comeback, a love affair with the arts and podcast form. I talk to creators from all different walks of life, discussing the ups and downs of being a creative in modern society, delving into the nitty gritty of the arts industries. Today on The Creative Comeback, I chatted to Ollie Hamburg. Ollie is a talented videographer from Southampton. As well as creating stunning imagery, he is the co-founder of the Forgotten Arts Festival. We spoke about looking for opportunities within the industry. Question, why did you choose videography as a career? Um, So I started, my first experience of ever doing like any videography or anything like that was um, in media at GCSE and we had to make a music video. And I've looked back at that music video recently and it's, the worst thing I've ever filmed. They gave us like a flip out, tiny little handheld camcorder. And um, I made a video to a Five Seconds of Summer song, <laughs> which I don't know why I chose that. It had no relevance at all. Um, and then I kind of started that and a few friends around me were like making like YouTube videos because at the time that was quite a big thing. And um, one of my friends was really heavily into that. So then I was like, oh, the camera's quite cool. And then I got a camera for my 16th birthday I think it was and which was like a little DSLR I started off doing photography and stuff like that and um did I worked at common common people festival uh, in Southampton I uh, did a few photos there and then I was like oh, I kind of don't like photography this isn't really like for me and I started doing videography in a level um where I just made like a few random videos. I made a documentary for my like assignment kind of thing. And it was rubbish, like really rubbish. <laughs> but I look back at it, it's kind of like, that's where it kind of all started from. And I don't know, I just always liked being quite creative and stuff like that. But yeah, so it kind of stemmed from there, really. Sort of just fell into it. Didn't, there was no yeah. specific pinpoint. It's just like, oh, I like doing this. I'm going to make it a thing. Yeah, I don't really know why I chose media at GCSE, but then I loved it at GCSE and my teacher was like, well, oh, you could do it at A-level. So I was like, oh, okay, sure, I'll do it at A-level. And then at A-level, they were like, oh, you could do it at a degree. And I was like, sure. You're just like, I'm just being pushed in a certain direction. Yeah. <laughs> um, so where do you take your inspiration from? Is it specific people or things or just the environment around you? I'd say at the moment, my biggest inspiration would be, oh, there's a guy called Con, who's a videographer that I follow quite closely. And um, over the years, I've seen him like build up his production company and he's bought like a studio um, in London and stuff like that. And that's kind of where I aspire to be. And he does like, a range of things like music videos to like filming random people's videos and like adverts and stuff like that. And yeah, I always look at his work and he's got like a behind the scenes YouTube channel and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool because he's kind of doing like, at the moment I want to go into TV and he's doing TV kind of shoots, but for like YouTubers and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's like lots of cameras and he owns all the gear and then he's at every single one of their shoots. And that's kind of something that I'd like to get into, I think. I think it's interesting because like when you look on YouTube now, there's so many more like series being made. I don't know if that's the right yeah. thing to call it, but I personally would rather watch YouTube over TV. Like I just don't find TV interesting now. I think no, yeah. it's going in that sort of direction where everything's online. Like the yeah. generation want to watch it online and like you're watching all of these YouTube stars, like you said, like having their own little series and things like that. And I like, think like the, the fact that they're so short as well, like a t- some TV shows are like an hour long and I sit there and I'm like, you could have done this in like 20 minutes. And that's what a lot of YouTubers are doing. It's just like a 20 minute, 15 minute video where it's just, they cut out all the rubbish in between and it's just all like the fun stuff that you actually want to see rather than like, I don't know. I looked at like Gordon Ramsay's new game show and it's just like, there's so much stuff in there that just doesn't need to be in there really. And then you've got the adverts, like I suppose on YouTube, yeah. you've got like a 30 second ad that you can most of the time skip. And mm. then you've got to sit there for like, I think it's like something like five minutes now, isn't it? Like every ad break. So yeah, talking about adverts, when um, Megan and Harry did their ad, their 
Oprah thing, I timed with the adverts. <laughs> I think it came to like, it was the whole two hour thing was something like 35 minutes off of adverts. Exactly. It's just like, it's just I, meant to. when I watched it, I thought, do you know what? This could have been done ages ago. <laughs> but like, <laughs> every time something slightly dramatic happened, it went to an ad break. I was like, oh. yeah, ad break. It's yeah. even worse in America. Oh my God, I know. They literally say like three words and it's like, right, we're going to go. Literally. But no, so we've gone really off topic. I do this every time. Yeah. Um, so basically, you take inspiration from someone who's built their own company and um, has sort of worked from the ground upwards. Mm. Do you think that's sort of what you want to do in the future? Is like have your own company or do you want to work for other people? Or? I think I was talking about this the other day to someone and I think I want to start off going into TV and like that's what I've found that I've really loved going through university. Like um, I did a bit of work experience with the BBC and I loved working. I did like BBC news and I loved that because it was different every day you went in, like you literally walk in and they'd be like, right today, this is your news story. You're going to this place. You've got to meet this person to film this. And then suddenly you could be called to like somewhere else. And they're like, Oh, there's a better news story here. And that was so like fun because it was like fast paced and stuff. And, also had a bit of like studio work as well. But then I also kind of want to do a bit of like fun stuff, like game shows and stuff like that. We did a few of those at uni, like uni projects in the studios. And I found that really fun because it's just, you're like, you get a bit too engrossed in it. You're like, you feel like you're watching TV, but you're like, oh no, I actually need to film this kind of thing. But um, yeah, I think I want to start going into TV and then hopefully go and maybe like build my own production company kind of thing, which I've kind of started freelance a bit at the moment, but just carry on working on that on the side kind of thing and then go from there really. Yeah, definitely. I think, like you said, sometimes it's good to sort of like try lots of different things to work out which one it is that you want to do, if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. Who wants to go straight into it and then be like, I hate doing this. Yeah, yeah I don't want to be like, I just want something that's like, exciting and always different every day yeah definitely um sort of going off of you saying that you freelance um mm. do you feel like you are supported mentally and financially in what you do i think being freelance i haven't really experienced it much because it's not a huge earning like i've got a part-time job that is my main earning but um i think being freelance is challenging like I know a lot of freelancers that have done it for years and it's hard because you could one month you could have like six projects on the go and then the next month they could all be gone and finished and you've got none for a few months and stuff but I think it's quite exciting because you don't know what's coming up and like it, you could just do anything kind of thing it's your choice but it's also probably quite daunting not having someone there that's telling you that you're doing this this is what you're doing today and always having something steady kind of thing yeah, I feel like even in the fashion industry, it's sort of the same. Like, mm. sort of just keep going and hope that one day you get somebody who goes and tells all their friends and then all of a sudden you're fully booked for like months on end. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like who you know. And I guess as well, like I know I'm not 100% clued up on it, but I have heard that sort of self-employed freelancers have basically been forgotten about what everybody else has been getting paid this whole time. Because don't, I think it's hard, isn't it? Because you have to have like a certain amount of years that you've been self-employed and you have to have the evidence to show it. And what's, what's your stance on that? I think there was a lot of like, uh, what do they call it? Like red tape that was stopping people from getting that if they hadn't um, qualified. And at the moment I'm doing a project uh, called the Forgotten Arts Festival. And um, I've been working quite closely with a lot of people who have been in that situation haven't been able to get anything and then have had to go on to claim like um universal credit and stuff like that instead of being able to get what they deserved really kind of thing because where I had a part-time job I got furloughed but people who are self-employed didn't get furloughed at all and that wasn't even an option for them which made it quite challenging because they had to prove a lot and didn't really get the full amount that they should have got and would be used to earning kind of thing. And do you think that working in a creative industry is an unskilled job, like it's sort of been um, made out to be? Um, or do you think that the government like to belittle it um, and belittle the skills it actually takes to be in the creative industry? 
I think the government place a lot of disrespect on the whole arts industry. I think I think the, a lot of people have really relied on the arts throughout this like pandemic and everything. And people have like everyone's been watching Netflix, everyone's been watching like YouTube, everyone's been watching TV because that's all you could have done. And if the arts wasn't there, or like even like like fashion magazines, people have been reading those, people have been on social media, like you, people have probably scrolled like social media every hour for the last year because that's all they've got to do. And without people from the creative industries, that none of that would have been there kind of thing. And yeah, I think the government really just overlook it, especially considering it's such a big part of like the UK's economy. And I think it attracts like, 57% of people to come to this country for tourism because of like the art arts industry and like theatre and stuff like that so yeah I think it's really been like undervalued through the whole pandemic really and I think even before the pandemic it was pretty like just glossed over kind of thing and not really looked at. Yeah definitely I was talking to someone the other day and we were saying like it's just crazy because everyone is like oh we don't need the arts but like everything is designed. Like we we're saying, even someone has sat there and designed what colours your microwave is going to be. So it's like, you yeah. can't live without it. And like you said, it's like crazy because it does bring in so much tourism and money. And I think that's why, if you look at like how much debt we're in and things like that and how bad the economy is, a massive part of play is the fact that people can't go to festivals, people can't watch music, they can't like do all of these things. And, um, I feel like everyone's just like, oh, we don't need it. Like, I don't think people fully grasp how many different things is classed under the arts. Like, just watching TV, yeah. like, or even if you're just watching, like, this morning, like, someone is sat there videoing it. Someone's put the outfits together. So many Yeah, different- it's like um, the government campaign where they did the whole ballerina telling her to retrain. Like, the government, their press briefings, there's someone filming it. There's someone telling Boris what to wear. There's, like, somebody doing his makeup. There's like all these people that are in that industry and then they've just been like oh go and retrain and do something in cyber security and stuff like that it's just crazy yeah I was actually going to ask you about that because that was sort of um, this sort of project was sparked from because I was just like Mm. people just think it's so easy like oh I'm going to put on some shoes and I'm going to be a dancer today it's like not as easy as that and like I don't think people realize how much effort it is to like put into it and I speak to some of my friends that do that history or science and they're like oh my god I can't believe how much physical work you do and how like long the hours are like we will be in uni from like nine to five fully just Mm. on like things and if we're not at uni doing that we're outside shooting or planning for shoots and it's like never ending I think people just think oh let's put a pretty little outfit together and take a picture of it people think it's definitely I think people have always thought that about like the creative industries and media in particular, like people, when people say, when like I get asked, oh, what do you go to uni to do? And you say media, the amount of people that turn around and go, oh, that's like an easy one. Like, that's kind of just like a one just to get you through. But they don't realise like, you don't just turn up to a shoot and film something. You've got to get all your equipment. You've got to plan the shoot, make the storyboards, um, get there, like set everything up, film it. And then after it, there's still so much more like editing and stuff that goes on and, yeah, I just don't think people really understand, truthfully. Honestly, and it's like, we have the same when we try and like do photo shoots. Obviously, you have to arrange who's going to be the ones modelling it. You have to buy the clothes. You have to yeah. borrow it. You have to like, even just transporting it, you've then got to make sure you steam it when it comes out of wherever you've transported it from because it's going to be creased. And yeah. then you borrowed it or if you're sending it back, it's be immaculate. And it's like one of those things, it's like people don't realise like there's so much to it and like three outfits can take an entire day to shoot just three outfits on one model yeah people just so are so like oh it's easy like i'm gonna do it as an yeah. I'm like, well, have fun when you step into it and you're like oh, yeah so overwhelming. i definitely think it's more with like the older generation as well like they see like things like accounting and stuff like that it's like oh that's an amazing thing to go do and then i suppose they don't really know much about social media and the creative side of things so kind of don't place as much like um whatever the word uh place as much like respect on it kind of thing and yeah yeah I think that's I think what you said is right like there's definitely a lack of respect for it and I think mm. maybe in the future the younger generations who engage with it more 
will see sort of a bit more respect towards it but it depends because I was doing some research and um quite a lot of the secondary schools and primary schools have cut like art and um, music completely because they can't afford mm. more resources for it because they've had their funding cut so I think it's hard because in one way you hope the new generation are gonna embrace it but then also they're having it taken away because government are like you're not important so we're gonna cut yeah I know my old secondary school my sister now goes there and they dropped media off the syllabus like I was the second year to ever do media and now it's gone so that's like a, a what, like four year period no probably a bit more like five year period and like it's just gutting to see like if I had never randomly chosen media then I wouldn't be where I am now I probably never would have really like looked into it but um now people aren't really getting that opportunity at all yeah exactly we're sort of the same so our course um at uni is just fashion styling at the moment but mm. As the funding just isn't there people they're having to merge styling and photography together because mm -hmm. like people don't realize they're not like given the sort of push towards certain things they're just like I want to do something creative so then they've had to, blend yeah. to sort of encourage people to do more than one and have like multiple options mm. um so what is like video creation and sort of media to you I suppose it's like it's what I love really it's like I think my girlfriend would say it's all I talk about really much to her disgust but um like yeah it's just like what I've always not always loved doing but it's what I love doing I started off like loving music and then I think I like saw like photographers at the gigs that we were playing because I was in a band and I was like oh that's quite cool I'd like to try that out so then did like a few photos at friends bands that we'd met I was like, oh, this is quite cool. And then got into video and started like videoing acts and stuff like that and worked with a few musical artists and stuff like that over time. And yeah, I think it's just something that I really do want to make into something quite big and something like that I'll base my life around kind of thing. Yeah, I completely get you. I feel like everyone dreams about having their hobby as their job. Like, I can't think of yeah. them, like, going to work for fun and getting paid. No. And just kind of think, like, oh, I had such a good day today yeah I just want to yeah it's going to be like you put the nail on the head there like a fun job that I'm going to enjoy going to every day kind of thing yeah I don't want any of those waking up on a Monday morning like oh no oh yeah I want to, on Sundays I want to be like oh yes Monday tomorrow that's yeah. what I want to get to oh the weekend's so boring yeah <laughs> definitely um sort of a bit of a big question here what do you think the world would look like if art wasn't in it I think it'd be very boring. It'd be like one, just one colour, really. Like everyone would probably wear black and there'd be no like nice clothes. There'd be no like, I suppose you'd, you'd have nothing really because there'd be no brands because no one could advertise. You just have like one drink, one of it, like one of everything, one sort of food. Like, I think, yeah, just very boring, I think. And people would be bored probably, I suppose. like we've always had some forms of media like comics and newspapers and books and stuff like that. That's all media. So without any of that, you'd just be really bored, I think. Yeah. It's just hard to imagine because like you're so used to it. It's like, you just genuinely can't even think about what it would be like. No, I think, yeah, I think it'd be very, very different. And I don't think people would enjoy it <laughs> if we suddenly went to having no media. Just take away like Netflix and everyone's just gonna be like, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you feel coronavirus has impacted the art slash the creative industries? I think it's caused a lot of creative people to kind of look at things and go, oh well, if I want to do this, I should just kind of do it. Like, that's what I found myself doing in the first lockdown, just getting as many opportunities as I could, as many jobs, like editing jobs and stuff like that. Just, I think people are now just looking at it like, oh, I could do it. But on the other hand, I think some, some people have just been like, I need to find like a more sustainable career kind of thing that's got a steady income and stuff like that, which is unfortunate. I know a few musicians that have reached that point where they're just like, I couldn't like survive having well, a whole year now of not having a regular income, which they were used to. 
So they've had to get like supermarket jobs and stuff like that. But hopefully after this, they can get back into it. And hopefully, I think there'll be a big demand for things. And I know there's going to be quite a big, everyone in the TV industry is talking about a big like boom in production suddenly, which is going to come about. Because obviously you can do limited things now, but a lot of things are very delayed. And like, I think EastEnders were like six weeks behind at one point or something like that. So things like that are suddenly going to have to start going again once things can go. And yeah, I think I think it'll be quite exciting, but I think we've lost quite a lot of really talented people, unfortunately, to the pandemic coming along. Definitely. I feel like, like you said, I know that a lot of the festivals and stuff sold out in like minutes flat, which is like unheard of for some of them. Yeah. And I think it's like, I think it will like sort of bounce back because I think people have sort of realised now after like a year and a half of it, oh my God, like we do need it so badly. Like I miss just being outside, <laughs> music, but like just miss being outside with my friends, having fun. And I think luckily for like sort of me in the fashion industry, we sort of done all right because a lot of the online retailers who were the way forward anyway, have mm. just, people have just been spending money there. Cause like what else you do? Just spend money online. Yeah, literally. <laughs> there's a lot of jobs coming up there but I think like you said like in terms of at the moment it's just about teaching yourself different skills that can get you into a job that sort of maybe isn't exactly what you thought you were going to do in the first place but I think jobs are so different now I think I don't think there's going to be many so many people are going to be working from home now I've got family who like the offices have just been like well we're not going to pay for an office anymore so you're just going to work from home forever now kind of thing because it's just a cost that people don't need to pay. So I think if companies can get you to work from home, then they will. I know somebody's just got a job at Sky and they have never gone into Sky. They just work at home. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Cause like there's been like a massive sort of movement away from London now because it's so ridiculously expensive. And like you said, yeah. in an office when we've realized actually sometimes it can work better at home and people sometimes will actually rather do it at home because you can roll out of bed and you're ready to go. Yeah it saves on the whole commuting and the time but then I also do feel like there's a bit of like a lack of a cut off point because where they know you're already at home they're like oh you don't mind just doing this on the end of the day like there's no sort of like no yeah. like that but I think you're right like I definitely think a lot of it now is going to be from home and it's like interesting because I feel like the arts industry as a whole have sort of adapted to it if that makes sense so like now we're creating our best work in this sort of environment I think it's going to be weird when we go back to how we're used to it I think we're all going to be a bit like oh this is so weird like yeah it'll take a while to adjust definitely definitely um do you feel like there's a lot of pressure to be creative even though sometimes you can be like mentally drained or like not inspired like especially in lockdowns and things like that do you feel like people are pressuring you to like be creative 24 7 I think so. I think it can get quite hard when when you've got like clients and stuff like that and then they say, oh, well, what do you want to do? Like, what would you do? And you're like, oh, this is quite a big question. Like, And if you, sometimes you get those days where you're just like, oh, I, I cannot think of anything. Like, it, it does not come to mind. Like, I just need a day off, like not thinking about anything. Just watch some rubbish TV that just takes your mind off everything. But I think it's hard to sometimes sometimes everyone gets these days i think where even in any job you'd have a day where you can't really function you just it's just life i think and every, that's just being human kind of thing but um yeah it's i think when i was in my second going into my second year of university in my first year i got quite a lot of opportunity and i was like oh yeah this is cool and then second year i was like oh what do i actually want to do i didn't really have a clue but um that was when i kind of focused more into like the video side i was like I just had to kind of get myself back on side and like re-motivate myself kind of thing and just start telling people, oh, I'll do this for free for you. And then that builds then into paid things and kind of getting a job out of it kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. I think it's harder when it's your job to be creative because yeah. like people around you might not be putting pressure inside. You're just like, oh, I really need to do this. I need to do that. And you're watching. Yeah. And you can't even relax because you're like, oh, that would work for this, this, and this, and this. And you're like, oh, I just want to watch like selling stuff. Yeah. I don't want to like 
think about it and then oh those shoes would go really well with this outfit that I can't find shoes for like you just can't stop I think and it's like one of those things but I suppose yeah putting it in a creative outlet is probably the best way for it um, I think it's even like smartphones now like everything is on my phone like google drive stuff like that so every time like this festival I'm working on at the moment we're getting like submissions this week of people's performances and like every time one comes in I get a notification so I'm like oh I need to watch that so that's like 20 minutes of me watching that checking it through then like uploading it to the place it needs to go kind of thing like filling out all the forms and then like I'm just doing that on my phone while I'm sat like waiting for dinner or something like that kind of thing and yeah I think it's just like no no like boundaries kind of thing which is hard I'm the same I'm like oh right that's someone like messaging me about something that we need to do tomorrow <laughs> off today but I'm just gonna work I'm just gonna do it anyway yeah in this sort of industry I don't think no yeah it's hard to get your schedules to like match with people yeah because you've got like everyone's on their own time so you've then got to find like that one tiny little like and sometimes it can be like your only free hour of the week that if you left yeah. the and they're like oh, you do that hour and you're like right it looks like I'm <laughs> Wait till next week then. Yeah. Um, speaking about opportunities, uh, how do you find your opportunities in the industry? Like, do you have them provided by uni? Do you seek them out yourself? Like, what's the best way to find them? I went into uni thinking that they were going to, like, kind of give them to you, which was very, like, naive because uni is very independent. I didn't have that view when I went. And we kind of went to, like, the first... I remember in the first week of uni... They were like, oh, you need to do, I think it was 250 hours of work experience uh, in your first year. Um, don't bother applying for the BBC and Channel 4 because you'll never get it for in your first year. And I was like, well, I reckon, like, what's the harm in applying? And I applied, contacted someone at the BBC and got it. And, like, all my tutors were like, oh, how did you do that? Like, nobody ever gets in their first year. And I was like, well, if you're telling people that they, they're never going to get it, then they won't you just have to apply for anything and use any contact you've got like I it happened that I had my uncle knew someone who was a cameraman that in a production company and worked with them and stuff like that and it just like then they you meet someone on that shoot that knows someone and then you work with them and like Joe who I used to be in a band with when I was 14 his band's now really successful and there's like signing record deals and stuff and need music videos so I've been doing music videos with them and it's like it all comes from knowing people I think yeah definitely it's like sometimes it's just like I said just pulling that thread on that one person you know it like can unwrap like so many different things like yeah. one of the ladies that I work with in Tesco's on the weekend she we were having a conversation the other day and she's like yeah my daughter's best friend um Star's Little Mix and I'm like what? <laughs> I'm like <laughs> pass along the email or <laughs> so I'm like okay like it's just crazy how like just knowing someone for something like you said something so random can actually yeah. sometimes just be that piece that you've been looking for to yeah sometimes it's never it's not in like you could be in something that's nothing to do with the industry you're in and they'll know someone that knows someone kind of thing and it's just like crazy definitely a small world everybody knows everybody I think definitely um, how do you plan to develop your career slash how have you already developed it? I think already developed, I think just taking on as much as I can, which has been pretty busy through lockdown. And I've got through four one terabyte hard drives just through like the past year of just like videos and editing stuff. And I think like in the future, I just want to carry on taking on things like things I enjoy doing and just see where that gets me apply for jobs like it's just like show reels and stuff like that trying to get them up to date and it's so hard to choose what to show people because like I've done so many things that would not be relevant to some jobs so you've got to cut things out and stuff like that but I think yeah I just want to get better and hopefully see like a change because I've definitely seen a change over the last year of the work I've done I want to like kind of have like my own yearly review like you'd have at a normal job but like on myself just to see like okay are you actually getting better at this or do you need to like really sort yourself out kind of thing yeah definitely and I feel like as well it's hard because 
you're in a way you're like your biggest critic but also you're like protective over it you're like oh but I work really hard on that that took me so long yeah and definitely savage like I know I've had stuff in my portfolio and I've been like oh I love it I love it I love it and then I've looked at it and gone to know what I can you know it's getting, it's getting... <laughs> you can't apply for jobs either you've got to like like you said you've got to filter it and then it's like every single time you want to apply it's like a two-hour process of like picking what's going to be the best one to put in like certain brands and it's just like yeah not more than me. yeah and sometimes I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow. And, it, and just tomorrow doesn't come. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Um, what do you see yourself doing in five years' time? Oh, five years. I don't, how old do I be in five years? 25, I'll be. Oh, nearly 26. Um, I think I would like to be working in TV, definitely. I'd like to be either doing something like new but as well as like freelancing still on the side with like my own company kind of thing that I've built up just because I, f- I find that really fun just to do like random things. And if I can still do that alongside like an actual job in TV, that's like best of both worlds because then I'll be working in the week and at the weekend, <laughs> just doing what I love really kind of thing. So, yeah. Do you feel like your dreams that you want to reach within the five years that we've sort of just talked about, do you feel like they're supported by like your mentors your family um and society or do you feel like there's sort of always this like oh you're never going to be able to do that oh oh in five years time no you're gonna it's gonna take you 10 years to do it like do you feel like you have the support there or do you feel like the opposite i think i've i've got really supportive people around me which is really nice and all my family is so supportive like i'd say they probably at the beginning were like oh videoing's a bit like they didn't really know what it was kind of thing. And then they saw that I was doing like music videos. And now like my mum gets so excited with like the music videos that I'm doing. And she, like, she gets to watch them before, like months before they actually come out and stuff like that, that she likes. And I think my grandparents love that I do like TV stuff. And like when I worked on BBC news and stuff like that, meeting the presenter, she was like, my nan was like, Oh, you've met that person. And I was like, yeah. She's like, no way like like it was some huge thing and um but yeah I think I've got really supportive people and like I've got a production company with my friend Holly who I met at uni and we work quite well together just doing like random things that come our way and stuff like that which is really nice I think it's just quite a happy environment at the moment which is nice yeah definitely I think it's always good mums are definitely like your number one fan I know definitely oh let me see let me see and she's like I love it yeah. <laughs> work on that oh thanks mom. and I think it's always nice because you do get sort of in the industry that we're in people can be pretty nasty at times yeah it's nice to have like your mum behind you is like do you know what ignore what they say like I love <laughs> it and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah you've got to be quite brutal in the industry sometimes and like like the other day I was doing auditions for presenting role for like casting someone and like when you get someone that's not ideal for the role, I just hate having to say no kind of thing, especially when it's online and over Zoom, you're like, oh, this is horrible. Like, you're really nice, but I just, you're just not right for what we need kind of thing. Yeah, you're like, how do you say it without having some of these feelings? Yeah. Definitely, I could not imagine doing that. I'm the worst person when it comes to stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> no, <laughs> photo in the end. Yeah. It's so hard to say no, and it's something that you need to like, learn yeah definitely um and finally my last question is do you have any other thoughts on the underfunding of the arts industry and the treatment of the arts during this pandemic i think it's just been pretty ridiculous and like i know it's been tough for everyone and like the government have had so much to deal with kind of thing but I don't think that's really an excuse. And when you look at how much debt we're realistically in, if you were to add on a little bit more funding for the arts to help people that are really like contributing a lot to the economy in a normal year, like it wouldn't make a huge amount of difference. Like I don't think people would be angry because people do rely on it. Yeah, there'll be a few people that are like, oh, you shouldn't fund these people, blah, blah, blah. But I think the people that missed out were really should have been entitled to it and have really missed out. And it's been pretty,
pretty tough for them to deal with over the last year. But yeah, I think the whole campaign that they did to retrain was horrendous. And although they said they were all misquoted and stuff like that and removed it, I, I never think there was an actual apology. And I think it just kind of solidified for a lot of people in the industry, like they don't care and they're never going to care. It's always going to be the same kind of thing, really like support themselves, but leave the other people behind kind of thing. Definitely. I know when I saw it, it just wound me up. I was like, really, I've worked so hard and you actually start at such a young age, like to do these things. And then they're just like, yeah, you're not important. (laughs) And like you said, like, it's like the advert. Oh, sorry. Sorry, right. I was gonna say we are like you said in so much debt. Like, what's a little bit more gonna do? Like, mm. it's like the advert even featured like I know the photographer came out and said I never gave them permission to use this photo. Didn't know it was gonna be used for this. Like the ballerina, it was an American photo anyway. Like the ballerina was American and she'd been training since she was like three years old. And you're like, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like so much time has gone into that, and then you've just disrespected it in just by sticking some font next to it and whacking it on an advertising campaign like around the country. Honestly, and it's just like, if that isn't the complete opposite of the point they were trying to make in the first place, like, oh yeah, you need to retrain because there's no jobs in it, but like, we've literally showed you that there's loads of jobs to create this advert in the first place. Like, yeah. just made themselves look stupid. But- I don't know how it got through so many people. Like, there must have been people going, oh yeah that's fine over to the next stage like surely someone at that government was like "Mm, this is a bit dodge someone pressed like publish on that and i don't know who it was or why they thought it was a good idea but i think they definitely realized that was worse than they'd done yeah it's just crazy yeah (laughs) thank you